This is the Edifier D12 Bluetooth stereo loudspeaker. In this video we're going to have a chat about it and of course we're going to open it up and see what's inside. It's very loosely based on the R1280T which is a stereo pair of loudspeakers, not Bluetooth, but basically the same thing, but is in a conventional two-piece unit, whereas this is all in one. Other ways that it differs from the original L1280 is the tweeters. They are supposed to be an updated and improved version of the original one. Whether the base units have been improved, I'm not sure because I don't have the original speakers. If you haven't seen the original review I did of the L1280, which was three years ago, I suggest you have a look at the link in the comments. Incidentally, that video has been one of my most popular and it's had 138,000 views. Looking at the back panel, we have the on off switch and mains power in. And we also have a line output, which in the instructions refers to it as a sub bass output. Now this isn't strictly true as it lines output everything. But presumably if you have a subwoofer, this would have the necessary filtering on it already. But as it stands, it's, it's a line output. In other words, everything that goes in comes out. On this side, we have an auxiliary in and another, well, not another, but a line in. Now, these are basically the same thing. They're on separate switches, so you can have something on here, which is the 3.5 millimeter socket and two RCA or phonos, whichever you prefer to call them. And these are for anything other than um, a telephone blue Bluetooth output. Now, the only thing you need to consider about this, it will not take a pickup cartridge directly from a turntable. Um, I should I should elaborate and say a magnetic cartridge because you could theoretically if you have a really cheap and tacky turntable with a ceramic cartridge, you could feed it in here directly, but um, the impedance is a bit low. So let's say not suitable for a turntable that does not contain an RIAA preamp equalization, but you could connect anything else that requires a basic flat input. Incidentally, we're going to take this off later in the video and show you what's inside. The unit does come with this remote control with basic functions on it. I don't think I need to go into great detail, but you can control volume and the input of the um, whichever input you decide to use. By default, it seems to come up on Bluetooth which is probably what most people would use it for. On the top, we have traditional volume control, and it also has a click button, and that selects the input. As I say, when you power it up, it defaults into Bluetooth, but if you want it to go to another input, you press that and that's auxiliary, and the, again, it's the other input. Bass and treble controls, not much at this stage to say about this. What can I tell you about this loudspeaker? Well, first of all, it's very typically Edifier. By that I mean it's not what I would call a true hi-fi speaker. Now, I need to qualify that because everyone's interpretation of what hi-fi is, is a matter of opinion. And my opinion is probably no more valid than somebody else's. So I'll tell you why I say that. 
and you can draw your own conclusions. If someone says to me, what do I think a hi-fi loudspeaker is? I would say a loudspeaker that reproduces the sound as accurately and with a flattish response as to play music as it was recorded. Now, bearing in mind, no loudspeakers are perfect. In fact, the loudspeaker is probably the weakest link in the chain, whether you spend thousands of dollars or like this. $160, that's New Zealand dollars. So it's not an expensive loudspeaker. So I'm not expecting, and you shouldn't be expecting that it's going to give you hi-fi results. What it does do is give you very, very good value for money. And providing you're not looking for that sort of monitor quality, you won't be disappointed, I'm sure. Now, the reason I say this is because this is an active loudspeaker, which means it has amplifiers built into it. So all you need to connect in the case of this, I'm pointing behind me because it is behind me. We're, there we go. Um, not very good photography, this, when I'm blocking the thing I'm talking about. But this has two amplifiers and it was it is designed primarily to connect to a telephone and output music or whatever you have on your Bluetooth uh, telephone. Smartphone, sorry, I keep calling it a telephone, but that's what it is to me. I hate the things. And the quality from the Bluetooth is pretty good. It's not as good as the line input, but then it won't be because Bluetooth as a medium is not as good. But for connecting it to your phone, it does give pretty good results. Now, the point that I should have made earlier, I've been beating about the bush as per usual. The reason I would say it's not hi-fi is because all edifier lower price loudspeakers use extensive signal processing. And whereas a normal setup would be an amplifier which you'd have the tone controls set zero or close to and the loudspeaker will output largely what's put in but these because they have extensive signal processing they have in my opinion excessive bass lift and excessive treble lift so instead of the frequency response being flat well, as flat as it can be as a loudspeaker, as you know, it does this sort of thing. It does this. It has the mid-range sucked out and lots and lots of bass lift and lots of treble lift. Now, the effect of this is voice sounds a bit like this. Unnatural and very... Boomy isn't the word. It's very bass heavy and voice in particular sounds very unnatural but all is not lost if you're the person that likes that sound and listens to electronic music um, you will probably find it heaven because it, it has copious amounts of bass lift and on top of that you've got the bass and treble controls which adds even more lift. So you can make insane amounts of bass, but I can see some people getting excited and, and ringing Amazon right now to place an order, but it's largely one note bass because the drivers are quite small and the only way you can get more bass out of them is to drive them hard which means they clip prematurely and also run out of steam past a certain limit. Um, but a demonstration I'm going to show you later <laughs> will amaze you for sure, because it amazed me when I did it. I thought, I'll just try this. But be patient. You will see what I'm going to tell you about. Can you make it sound like a, a natural loudspeaker? 
Well, you can sort of. And the way to do it, you need full base cut. Now, that doesn't mean the base is going like that. It means it's sort of flat because it still has, even though you've got full base cut on the base potentiometer on the, on the top panel, the actual EQ built in still is giving you that U-shaped frequency response. Now, the treble control um, has a, a bit of an unusual slope to it. it. It only really affects the extreme end of the treble control, but you've already got treble lift because of the EQ built in, which incidentally you can't, well, I'll come on to it. You can kind of change, but not really. Oh, this, is in, this is full of intrigue, isn't it? I, I'm excited to know what I'm going to say next. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, what was I saying? Goodness knows, I don't know. Um, I think I'd better do some editing here. Yes, the treble control, when you turn the treble control up, it doesn't appear to increase the brightness of the treble it just makes it very tizzy right at the top because instead of boosting around about the 7, 8, 10 kilohertz region, it seems to boost almost out of the audible range. Probably is out of my audible range at my age, but um, it doesn't have the usual sound that a treble control tends to. So, to summarize, if you want it to sound as near hi fi and accurate as possible. You need full bass cut and treble control on about 11 or 12 o'clock. And then doesn't sound too bad. Now it's designed to be mounted on a desktop. Well, designed, mm, they suggest that's what it's for. But if you, in, if you stick it right on the back of the bench so there's a wooden the, the, the timber of the bench is in front. It does sound a little bit like this. If you can get it off the table with air all around the speaker, it sounds better. Uh, for example, where I've got it on the bench here, it's largely for display so you can see it basically, but it sounds better here so that there's air underneath it than it does if you push it right back on the bench so if it's at all possible i would suggest you listen to it and move it around the bench as far as you possibly can because i appreciate where you put it is often the case of where you have to put it because of other ingredients and it also sounds better with the front grille off mainly because there's bits of plastic in the way of the tweeter and here, which happens to line up with the centre of the base cones. So it's not chalk and cheese, but I suggest you might like to try it without the front cover on. As with all Edify loudspeakers, the specification is a little bit of poetic license. I know you're surprised to hear me say that. Let me give you an example. The frequency response is 54 hertz. Now that's fairly definite, isn't it? To 20 kilohertz. But there is no reference to that. It's not plus or minus 3 dB, 6 dB, 1000 dB. So that frequency response is 100% meaningless honestly it, it doesn't mean anything you could say I, in fact i could say the frequency response of this is three hertz to 50 kilohertz and that wouldn't be any more of a lie than what this is because unless you say plus or minus x number of db in under what conditions it means absolutely nothing 
So completely ignore that. Now, the other weird thing about edifier specifications is power output. In the advertisement on um, Amazon, it says 70 watts RMS, undefined again. So again, completely and totally meaningless. But in the handbook, yes, there is one. It looks like it's very thick, but it's in about 5,000 languages. <laughs> it's actually got eight pages of specifications. Well, instructions, but most of those are the usual warnings. You know, don't put the speaker underwater because it makes it not work very well. Don't eat the battery and other useful stuff that you might be tempted to do. So where was I? In here, the, in, the, in the specifications, they are under specifications. Power output, and then it says left, right, treble, 15 plus 15 watts. Now, one thing that isn't in here, it's not biamped. So why you'd get a different power level from the treble um, units and the base mid-range I don't know because the base mid-range is rated at 20 watts again unspecified so they don't say whether that's 10 watts per channel um, but it can't be both and it, it also it, it sounds like they're sort of rating the drive units but of course they're not because if, if you put 15 watts sine wave into a tweeter, it would just burst into smoke. Because if you rate it at 15 watts, it probably means it will play the treble content of 15 watts of music, which would make more sense. But it would certainly not produce 15 watts of sine wave at any frequency. Honestly, if you were a sine wave a tweeter, you'd be lucky if it would produce more than two or three watts before it bursts into smoke and flames. I've done it. You don't want to do it. Very expensive. So anyway, so that's the specification. Don't take much notice. because, As you can see, 70 watts RMS. I mean, that is a specification of sorts, but it doesn't claim over what frequency band at what distortion level the amplifier is. So again, you might as well say the power rating is 12 and a half lemons or even oranges because it means the same, nothing. I was gonna say something rude then, but nah, I'm not going to. YouTube doesn't like it if you use bad words. The part that you may have been waiting for, we're going to take the thing to bits and see what's inside. To get the base unit out, um, you need a three millimeter Allen key, which is a bit like this. Now, what you need to do is to make sure you don't dig a hole in the cone. Again, I speak from experience on this. So do this with great care. Right, the screws are out. So we must try and lift up the base cone. It doesn't want to give up. Oh, it's got the usual bit of bum fluff on the end. In fact, the drive unit looks remarkably the same as the previous speaker that I looked at. And it's also got this piece of embarrassingly small buff wadding on here which I would suggest is almost completely useless. Well there isn't much at this stage to tell you other than the fact that the two units if you like are separated by that timber frame so you do get a degree of separation. Now right at the top there is the amplifier but we're going to take the amplifier board out and have a look at it shortly. So from this view, there isn't really much to show you. The port here 
stretches about what's that three to four inches and we'll have a quick look at the tweeter to see if there's any crossover down there by the way almost out of sight is the power supply which again we'll try and have a look at shortly so we'll whip out the tweeter now and have a look at that rather annoyingly the tweeter has a different size allen key required this is a two and a half millimeter one but it doesn't matter it's just one of those things that mean i had to delve in the cupboard to find another set of allen keys so i'll just whip this out that's the last screw a couple of points just before i nip whip this out you'll notice it's cut away here so the tweeter coil is nearer the base coil now on the original edifier speaker i did comment on that that the tweeter was quite a distance away from the cone for, of the base unit and it didn't integrate terribly well but i think they've done that partially to save space but also it just by default it means that the two units do integrate a little better and something here which you can probably just about see this is the infrared pickup um no it's not infrared it must be um i don't got, don't don't honestly remember um, but that's where it picks up the remote control and it also has the uh, coloured display. I'll show you that later. Anyway, let's whip out the tweeter. It's a staggeringly light. Ah, now that's interesting. There are no capacitors on it. So we'll have to look at the um, amplifier when it comes out maybe it does have a separate amplifier i i will i will be amazed if that's the case but it could be so we'll pop this back and whip out the back panel i have to say there's a limited amount of information i can give you on this if i point to here this is the audio amplifier chip and I haven't been able to identify it. These are the numbers that I've actually taken off it, but I can't identify it from any information on the internet. But it looks like it's a class D, well, it is a class D amplifier. Um, you can identify these by the chokes here now i did mention earlier in the video that i couldn't find a capacitor or any form of crossover and i half joked to say it looks like this is biamped and the figures they give are 15 watts for the treble and 20 watts for the bass could actually well apart from the poetic license of how they're rated could be true as i can't identify the chip here i don't know how many amplifiers are on it but it suggests that, it, that there is four i.e two per channel and that would lead it to believe that the it does have an electronic crossover of sorts and maybe these two chokes here feed the high frequencies and the two chokes here which are bigger feed the low frequencies which would kind of make sense the only other chip i can't identify is this one and that is obviously the signal processing and steering judging by the components around there and apart from other discrete transistors and piece bits and pieces there's nothing else on the board the power supply, which I can't take out easily without destroying it, which, as I paid for this with my own money, I don't really want to do that, even for you good folks. Sorry. But it's basically a switch mode power supply, as you'd expect. There is a small board under the tone controls, but again, it's not one you can get to because it appears to be sealed in there in some way. What does it sound like? Let's switch it on. 
This switches the power on for the first time at the back and the blue LED on there which should flash shows that it's on Bluetooth. That's a good, a good colour to show Bluetooth isn't it? And as soon as it picks up the signal from my telephone it will be on permanently. As you can see the blue lights on and it picks up the information on the phone as edifier D12. If I press the button on the top here, the volume control, it also selects the input. If I press it, you'll see the light changes to green and that indicates that it's picking up one of the auxiliaries from the back. Press it again, the other auxiliary, but stays the same colour, just to be confusing. Press it again and it reverts to Bluetooth. If you recall, I mentioned at the start of this video that this speaker produces an insane amount of bass. Um, certainly unlistenable in my opinion, but I've set the bass on full now and I'm going to turn the volume up. Now, sadly, I can't let you hear this piece of music um, because it will simply be removed and you won't hear it anyway. So I'm going to mute the sound during this, but the display, I think, will speak for itself. Here I have a clean but ruffled handkerchief and it's just in front of the ports, as you can see. And I'm going to put music on now and you'll see what I mean. I mentioned earlier that this speaker sounds better with the front grille removed and I have devised a, a small test that will show you what I mean. I'm going to play some white noise through the speaker and white noise for those that don't know is basically random noise or hiss I guess you'd call it for want of a better word and I'm going to play it like this and then with the speaker cover in front of it and you will hear a difference in the sound and which demonstrates what's basically wrong with the front panel so we'll play the noise now and get you listen to it that's going to come out it will depend on the equipment you're listening to it on but another test I can show you here is the effect of the bass and treble controls now white noise should not have a distinctive tone to it that's why it's called white noise because it's just random noise equally distributed from the lowest frequency to the highest frequency so if I bring the noise on again bass. I forgot to mention compared with the original um, edifier uh, a number of which yes the 1280 these tweeters are now supposed to be silk dome whereas before they were undescribed and touching it very lightly it does feel like a soft material rather than a hard sort of plastic cone as the original tweeters were quick summarization now is that a word or did I just invent that 
And then I'm going to play you a little bit of royalty free music from YouTube. Um, not the best for quality, but give you some idea. And I've adjusted the tone controls to give you what I would consider to be the best balance not which is basically full bass cut and treble on at 11 o'clock so to summarize should you buy it if you want a very good value speaker that has a reasonable sound amplifier and produces a reasonably good sound not hi-fi if you want hi-fi you wouldn't be spending hundred and sixty dollars so four hundred and sixty dollars I would rate it 8 out of 10. So let's have a listen to some music. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. 